¿Qué onda raza? Bienvenidos para atrás a mi YouTube channel Welcome back to my YouTube channel Un saludo para todos los que están mirando este recording El día de hoy es, estamos haciendo algo diferente uh, Un compa de Las Vegas Nevada, Castillo Photos me mandó, un, me mandó un mensaje y me dice Hey, este, te quiero hacer una entrevista para un, este, ¿cómo se llama? Un podcast que tienes, ¿verdad? Yeah. You have a podcast. I actually have them right here. I'm going to be recording as well with this one. So, guys. Aquí está el compa. Ah, su madre. Dice que no tiene SD card esta. Valió madre, entonces. We're not going to use this one. <laughs> so. Ahí está la, la, la extensión. So I have Castillo Photos right here on the laptop. He's actually going to be recording from that side where he's at. And he's going to be as asking questions. Yo se los voy a estar contestando. Este, a ver cómo sale la entrevista. La entrevista con el compa desde Las Vegas. A ver cómo se ponen, si se ponen interesantes la, las preguntas. Este, también lo que quiero hacer de voladita antes de que... Antes de que empecemos la entrevista, quiero mandar unos saludos. Porque siempre me piden saludos la raza de, por, por todos lados. Y trato de mandar los saludos lo más que se pueda. Este, como aquí tenemos, tengo un compa que se llama Martín Rosales. El compa es de, me estaba diciendo que es de, de Salmon, Oregon. Pero que... No sé si nació o vive en Pénjamo, Guanajuato. Un saludo para ti, compadre. Pénjamo, Guanajuato. Un saludo para ustedes. Este, siempre trato de leer sus, sus mensajes, sus, sus, uh, sus comments. I try to do as much as I can. Uh, soy de... Dice, saludos, este... El niño. Saludazo. Saludos para la raza de Amarillo. Saludazo para ustedes. A ver, por aquí hay más saludos. Saludos para la raza de San Antonio, Coahuila, Puro 956. Puro 956. Saludazo para ustedes. Vamos a ver. Hopefully we get, be, uh, keep giving uh, shout outs. Saludos during the interview. So, back to uh, aquí con el compa Castillo Foros de la Meritito Las Vegas, Nevada. ¿Cómo está la temperatura por allá en Vegas? Está bien caliente, es la jara, güey, bro. ¿Oh, ya? Yeah? Ya, yeah. yeah. well, ahorita ya no, pero con esto, lo de los fires and shit that have been happening, it's, it's a calmo, but it's been pretty hot. Yeah. The lowest it's gotten is 108, 109 degrees. Everything else has been higher than that. Mm. And then today, or yesterday, or like the last two days, y hoy, it's been in the 70s. But it's pretty hot. Bueno, bueno. Perfect time for micheladas. Ah, hell yeah. Micheladas, Carface, por todos lados, todo el tiempo. I preach it. I drink it. I love it. I want to disculpar, pero tengo un ojo medio madreado. Can you guys see my eye? One of my little veins pop. And I look kind of weird. Pero no pasa nada. Aquí estamos de todos modos. Corre y se va, échale a ver cómo a ver cómo van las preguntas y a ver cómo nos va. And we'll try to answer as accurate as best as we can. <laughs> Alright guys, just so you guys know, it's gonna be Spanish and English, so mita y mita. If I say it in Spanish and you guys don't understand it, I apologize. Pero let's get to start. Alright, so the first question, which is I'm pretty sure you get this a lot. Where does the name Scarface come from? And well, basically, who are who is Ruben? Where where does the name come from? And who is Ruben? Scarface Ruben. Who is Ruben? Ruben is Ruben Garcia. Así es mi nombre. Me llamo Ruben Garcia. Ah, uh, yo nací en Torrance, California. Soy nacido en California. Este, both of my parents son mexicanos. Mexicans, both of my parents, Mexicanos. A uh, mi mamá es que todavía vive, mi jefita, la quiero mucho. Es de Morelia, Michoacán. 
este, ahí es donde también viví cuando estaba joven, a uh, mi papá, que en paz descanse, también se llamaba Rubén García, y él es de Pénjamo, Guanajuato, so, tengo sangre guanajuatense, corazón michoacano, nacido en California. That's how Ruben, that's where Ruben comes from. El, el Ruben, soy a junior, y ya, I named my son Ruben, so he's the third. Este, Scarface. Scarface, ahorita el nombre, ya me conocen mucho por Scarface, pero antes me conocían por Scarface también, pero, pero, pero por, me hacían bully. <laughs> I would get bullied a lot. Because when I was 10 years old, tenía 10 años, andábamos en la feria de Morelia, Michoacán. Andamos en la feria y uh, para los que no entienden es like a fair. It's a fair. We were at the fair in Mexico y este ya era hora de irnos y estamos esperando dos primos y una prima estaba comiendo cañas y las cañas se miraron tan sabrosas que yo quería caña. Entonces le pedí a la prima y la prima no no me quiso dar. Pues yo muy valiente me bajo de la camioneta que éramos dos familias, me bajo de la camioneta, al cruzar una calle, pues venía un carro, yo tenía 10 años, no, I guess I wasn't thinking right out, or no, I just started running, empecé a correr, me encandiló la luz del carro, nunca me di cuenta que de aquel lado había alambre de púa, barbed wire, so, I ran in through the barbed wire, I slashed my face, me corté toda la cara, la, la parte de arriba de mi nariz, uh, todo de aquí hasta acá, la parte de abajo de mi nariz, esta parte de aquí se me trozó. So, yo caigo de aquel lado del, del, del alambre, me levanto y siento que algo está colgando y le hago así y es mi cara, me, mi cara estaba colgando. So, agarro y me levanto la cara y yo no sé ni cómo, me crucé para atrás por el alambre de púa. I went up to the window, en, es, en la camioneta estaba mi tío, mi tía, mi mamá y mi papá estaba en la ventana. Y pues yo llevo deteniéndome la cara y le toco la ventana a mi papá. Y mi papá se me queda viendo como, ¿qué quieres? Súbete a la troca. Y cuando le suelto la mano así, se me cae la cara, mi papá se desmayó. Me rajé toda la cara, me tuvieron que coser, ya no sé ni cuántas puntadas tuve, pero me cosieron toda la cara. Y pues de los 10 años en adelante, no hombre, no me la acababa, no me la acababa en la escuela. Scarface, Frankenstein, hijo de su pinche, híjole. Pero pues ahí, así es como, como resultó las rajadas y no nomás por el Scarface de la movie, no nada de eso. I mean, I'm scarred from my face. I got two big scars. I think you guys can see them right here. Y, y, y este y, y se me quedó el nombre se me quedó el, se me quedó el nombre de Scarface y, y crecí con él <risa> no sé cuando tengan antojo de algo y está de, de, detrás de una, una barra no vayan porque lo, no vayan no sé si no. sí no me se me hizo fácil pero pues, les, pero estaba les, la, les queda la, el, el, el sobrenombre y la carrilla regresa Sí, sí, sí. ¿Cómo ves? No, está bien. That's, I mean, that's a good way. That's, that's how I got my, my nickname. El Castillo Forus. No, no, no para andar de desmadroso. Just because that's how, because the way I look. Oh, yeah? I'm not Castillo. Castillo is just my last name. So, what, what's your, uh, yeah. what's your name? What's your, your nickname? Or ¿Cómo te dicen o okay? qué? Prieto. Ah, Prieto. Por lo bueno que soy. Ah, All right, so when it comes to the business, how did the whole thing happen? Did it like, did it happen just one day after another? Did it took some time? Because I know there's a lot of people that want to know. Obviously, when you create a business, you know it's difficult at the beginning. So, how long did it take you? Do you feel successful right now? Do you do you want to go bigger? Do you have other plans other than making mix or the moonshine? Anything else that you wanted to do with the name Scarface or was mix always the, the first idea? The first it, idea. 
Pues fíjate que esto de la michelada, yo nunca lo hice para vender. Nunca, nunca pensé en mi vida que esto iba que esto le iba a gustar a la gente, yo no, eso, eso nunca me vino a la mente, nunca, nunca, yo tenía, yo tenía mi trabajo, yo, yo trabajé, estaba trabajando en la construcción, ya tenía 22 años trabajando lo que es en la cerámica, ceramic tile, pegando cuadros, ya tenía 22 años, yo, esa era mi compañía, yo ya tenía un buen negocio, me iba, me iba bien, viajábamos con mi esposa, con mis hijos, uh, Teníamos, o sea, tenía todo. Yo, yo, te, yo, yo vivía una, una vida bonita con mi negocio de, de cerámica. Entonces, este, a como van pasando los años, uno el cuerpo va cambiando y, y así yo creo ya hace como 10 años, este, me empezaron a dar agruras con las, con las bebidas, con el chile. Y una vez fuimos a un restaurante y me tomé una michelada y me dio... Sentí que me estaba ahorcando, no sabía ni qué era. Y luego después lo hice otra vez y otra vez. Entonces me di cuenta que, que, que eran agruras. Que las micheladas que yo me estaba tomando, o en veces cuando comía chile, este, me daba agruras. Y ya no podía tomar las micheladas, porque yo soy bien michelero desde muy joven. Me, me, siempre me han gustado las micheladas. Y donde quiera que iba a un restaurante, lo, lo primero, una michelada. De lo primero, pero ya no me ya no me ya no me iban bien con mi cuerpo. Entonces, de ahí dije, pues sabes qué? Pues yo me voy a hacer una michelada. La voy a hacer a mi gusto y que no y que no me vaya que, que no me haga lo que me hacen todas estas micheladas que tomo en los restaurantes, en así en lugares, pues, en bars, whatever. Yeah. So no, ponle que no todos los días, pero empecé a hacer mezclas. Tenía una canastita con diferentes chiles. Ya le ponía apio, le ponía esto, le ponía el otro. Uh, siempre, siempre había una carne asada y me ponía, me ponía a hacer micheladas. Ya sea en la carne asada o en la casa hacía un caldito para echarle a la michelada. Pero siempre me, me afectaba, me afectaba, me afectaba. Después de... Ocho años, como ocho años se tardó esto. Un día, yo no sé ni qué, ni, en ese momento nomás dije, le voy a echar de esto, le voy a echar de esto, limoncito, pum, 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 pum. Hice la michelada, fuimos a una fiesta, me la tomé toda la noche, no me dio agruras. Me sentí muy bien y dije, ay, pues, ¿qué es esto? ¿Qué, qué hice? Ya el siguiente día la volví a hacer y la saqué perfecta que viene siendo la OG. Por eso le puse OG. Dije, este es my, my original uh, recipe. This is so awesome. So, I make the OG. Y empiezo a ir a las fiestas con los compas, con los camaradas. Uh, y me empiezo a llevar, empiezo a hacer y me empiezo a llevar los pomitos. Y llegaba a las fiestas con dos pomitos, tres pomitos, pero para mí, para ofrecer, ella, para no llegar con las manos vacías, un 12. Y por pues, la raza empezó a probarlo. Oye, ¿dónde compraste esto? Le dije, no, pues yo lo hice ahí en la casa. ¿Cómo? No, pues sí. Oye, pues, next weekend hazme un pomo. Ah, cabrón, dije, un pomo. Sí, hazme un pomo, véndemelo. ¿Cuánto me lo vendes? No, pues te lo vendo en tanto. Y ya vendí un pomo. Dos, tres semanas después, oye, que yo, mi camarada y el otro camarada quieren uno. Hazme tres. Paso. Ahí estoy, hago tres pomos. Hasta recuerdo que un día íbamos a ir a una boda o una fiesta, ya no sé ni qué. Y yo ya estaba arreglado, ya andaba de botas y todo. Y mi esposa se estaba arreglando, entonces me mandan, me mandan un mensaje. Hey, te quiero comprar tres, cuatro pomitos, si ¿sí me los puedes vender. Y pues yo dije, mi esposa todavía se está listando, de, 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 te los hago de volada. Pues me agarré y que me, que me pongo a hacer la michelada. Y en eso que acaba mi esposa de hacer, de, 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 de prepararse para irnos a la fiesta y que dice, ¿qué estás haciendo? No, le dije, todas son las micheladas de volada. Hasta me regañó. Deja eso. Deja tus micheladías. Ay, dijo, vámonos ya, ya vamos tarde a la fiesta. Le dije, no, espérate de... Déjalo a cabo, deja a cabo la michelada porque ahí vienen por ella. 
y así comienza esto de, 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 de la michelada Scarface, de hacerla nomás para mí, y de que una persona la probó, y luego de ahí él se la presentó a alguien más, y luego él a alguien más, y se fue extendiendo, se fue, y, se, y fue creciendo, y ahorita, y ahorita gracias a Dios, eh, estamos por todos los Estados Unidos, it's, it's amazing, it's crazy, casi, casi de no creerse, de que esta michelada fuera, de que fuera a hacer lo que está haciendo y, y no creo que, no creo que todavía hemos terminado con esto, esto top, hay topara yo digo, todavía. That's pretty nice. El, um, a ver, échale. Yeah, when you come to like doing, I, I know you just said like, that you were putting like flavors, trying out different things, like, um, When you want to do, because I, how many flavors you have now? Like 12? Ahorita ya tenemos 12, 12 sabores. 12 flavors. So how, how do you get, um, like what, what do you choose for like the flavors? I know you just did the Hot Cheeto one. Yeah. Which is your, your recent one. How did that come about in putting Hot Cheetos or at least crunch Hot Cheetos into a mix? Like that, how that was crazy. The way that nice. one happened. It was just, it was just that a one night, one day, drinking arriman un platito de, de hot cheetos right. eh, y, y se me hace fácil ser, meterle el hot cheeto a la michelada en like a dip and started eating them y de tanto que le estaba dipping and eating I was like wait a minute I got, some, I got something here y al siguiente día empecé a hacer a hacer mezclas y Measurements. Y it took us. It probably took about a month, month and a half. I want to say, of trial and error to get it to where it's at right now. Right. Pero de ahí, de ahí resultó el uh, el hot cheeto flavor. And that's how <laughs> you done it, like with all the mixes, because I know you have like tamarindo, pepino, limon, extra limon. You have all those flavors. Is it the same kind of like the similar process? Something like that. Mira, como el de el de mango. El de mango surgió porque estábamos en Los Ángeles, California, me acuerdo muy bien, que fuimos a un lugar de mariscos que nos recomendaron yeah. y, me, y me senté me senté en el restaurante y pedí una michelada. Dije, aunque me da gruras, pues ahí traigo, tra, traía peto bismol, yo no sé ni qué más traía. Dije, yo quiero probar las micheladas de acá. Yeah. Entonces me siento y me dice la, la mesera, ¿quiere la normal o la de mango? And I'm like, ¿de mango? <laughs> I was like, pues deme la de mango, and I, and I tasted it, I was like, wow, this is something different. Mm -hmm. And then from there, we went to another restaurant, like, de, como a los cuantos, al siguiente día o algo, y también tenían una de mango. Una sabía más, como a seafood, más fishy, que la otra, pero de ahí, la idea, yo ya empecé, oh my God, I can't wait to get home, and, and, and eh, hacer experimentos con mango. Yeah. A ver si yo puedo hacer la de mango. Una michelada con mango. No me, yo dije, te, tengo que sacarla. Y, y sí, bajándome el avión casi llegué, compré mangos y empezamos a hacer experimentos hasta que salió la de mango. <risa> y luego de ahí pues me surgió, oh shit, ¿qué, qué, qué otro sabor podría hacer? <risa> y de ahí fueron yeah, surgiendo los demás. Yeah, yeah. And I've, I've had suggestions. Uh, mucha gente me ha sugerido, hey, vienes de calar esto. Uh, y por lo, their suggestions, las sugeraciones de ellos, I hope I said that word right. <laughs> sugerencias, sugerencias. Um, he sacado, he sacado dos. La de limón y la de pico. Y la de spicy mango fueron sugerencias. Que alguien me dijo, hey, ¿por qué no haces esta? ¿Por qué no tratas de hacer esta? Y lo tom en veces lo tomé como un challenge. ¿Sabes qué? Let me try it. Y de ahí salieron los otros, de ahí salieron esos sabores. Like, All the time. Sure, yeah, every every time, everywhere you go, I'm pretty sure you get oh, let's do this flavor, 
um, as a, um, have you ever tried to like expand your business? I, I know you're in a lot of states right now. Yeah. Have you ever planned on like partnering with uh, a big company and putting it like in stores and stuff other than like liquor stores? Because I know there's, what was that liquor store you go to? Botanero. El, Bota, Botanero. El Botanero liquor store on, on, on Houston, Texas and, and airline. Um, yeah. Do you plan on like going like to like bigger markets? Man, I, like supermarkets and stuff. It's actually it's actually headed that way. It's headed that way. Lo único que ahorita estamos detenidos because we here where I'm at right now is where we make the mix and we outgrew this place already. So okay. we're actually looking for to expand. Queremos hacer un, un, una bodega. Queremos hacer un like a like a Scarface headquarters. Yeah, of uh, course. Y donde tengamos, podamos meter más empleados, um, you know, a parking lot for the, for, for the vendors to show up and pick up, a showroom, you know, to come and buy merch and stuff like that. Those are my, my goals. Those are my plans. With uh, the help of my wife, we, we, we're we already looking into it. We're, we're, we're planning. Um, hopefully in the, in the near future, uh, people can, can, you know, they're going to get to see uh, the Scarface headquarters. I don't even know what I'm going to call it yet, <laughs> but I'm thinking Same something like that. Yeah. What was the first city outside of Houston that distributed the mix? I think it was Dallas. Dallas, Texas. Saludos Dallas. para la raza de Dallas. Saludazo para ustedes. Dallas, outside, Texas, se empezó a mover. Mande. Oh, outside of Texas. Was it, uh, I think it was Oklahoma. No, no, no. no. California. California. Alexis Wait. Team Billet. Um, fue el que me dijo, hey, uh, me voy a llevar unos, me voy a llevar unos, unos mixes para allá para California. A ver yeah. si se venden. He was here at a show. I think it was called uh, Texas Oldham. And I was like, try it. No, me pues, no alcanzó casi ni a llegar a California con los mixes cuando se le vendieron. Yeah, I think that's the first time I bought, I bought some of the mixes too. Yeah, in Ca California. Alexis Timberlake, so solo para Alexis. Just recent then, like two years ago. Casi era. Yeah, yeah. The thing is that we were selling here at the house. And uh, empezó, empezamos a tener problemas con los, con los vecinos porque lo que es... Empezó desde, empezaba desde el jueves, pero más viernes y sábado, en, mi calle se saturaba por los dos lados de, de carros que venían a levantar y, y era un trafical y salían mis vecinos y nomás se quedaban viendo, like, like what are you doing? <laughs> yeah, hasta, llegar, hasta llegaron a llegar los, los policías a decirme, like, what's going on here? Y pues ahí, ahí van las, mentir, las mentirotas, no, we're having a party, but they don't know where to park. Yeah. Y, y luego pues de ahí, de ahí surgió la idea de los vendors uh, el primer vendor que tuvimos fue Noe he's a, he's a, he's my barber he's, he, he sponsors me eh, nadie más me corta el pelo nomás que él no, ni me co nunca me quiere cobrar <laughs> he says I got you I'm your sponsor él fue el primero que dijo hey give me some cases I'll take them to my to my shop donde corto pelo y ahí las vendo para que se baje poquito y le dije, you know what, that's a good idea. So se llevó unos a él. Y por la gente vio, hey, yo quiero vender en este lado de la ciudad. Y yo quiero vender acá. Y así se, se empezó a ir, Scarface. Se empezó a extender. Yeah. Yeah, give me a The only thing I hate about recording all this. A veces no sirven las cosas. Oh, shit. Yeah, let me see if I can get some saludos here while you're doing your thing. Un saludo para la raza de Pasadena, Texas. Um, déjame ver aquí, ¿qué más? Es que mucha gente manda saludos. Um, déjame ver. 
Emanuel Pérez dice, I got a 1992 Bronco, I'm trying to live. Échale chingazos, compadre, todo se puede. Uh, saludos para Pexley, California. I hope I'm saying that right. P-I-X-L-E-Y, California. Ah, un saludo para la raza de, de Guadalajara, Jalisco. Uh, hey, César, saludazos. Uh, un saludo para la raza de El Paso. What's up, El Paso? Um, let me see. Un saludo para la raza de Meca, California. Un saludo para la raza de Ombo, que estamos aquí en cortos, cerquitas. Uh, Mándame un saludo para el 806, Johnny Molina y toda la raza del pa Panhandle. What's up, Panhandle? Saludos chingón para ustedes. Saludos para la raza de Bronzeville, Mission, Texas. Un saludo para la raza de Sonora. José Valenzuela, what's up? Okay, alright, my bad. You ready, you ready? Yeah. Un saludo para la tía Angelina, Los Ángeles, what's up? Hometown. Pues ahí somos nacidos. Puro Cali, por eso me encanta ir a California. Y, y pues todavía tengo mucha familia ahí en uh, lo que es Long Beach. Um, Compton, Norwalk. Norwalk, Articia, ahí viví, ahí viví también en California cuando estaba Morrillo, lived there in Cali, saludos para los One Ways, para la raza de Articia, so eh. this whole business, has you, have you had any major big mistakes where you almost lost everything or have you almost been to the point where you want to like give up and just call it quits or you still want to expand more with the whole mix and into more stuff um fíjate que nunca nunca hasta ahorita nunca hemos tenido una traba mayor like a major like up you know yeah. we, we've never had that i just simply transitioned from my from my 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 business the, the tile Slowly me fui metiendo para lo del mix Y ya me vine para el mix And it was just like It just started flowing It just started flowing by itself Eso sí le tuve que meter um, Mucho al, 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 al recording Promociones A lot of, a lot of decals giveaway I wasted thousands of dollars Of just giving decals as far as away um, I did, I've done all my promotions And it just I, once I saw it that it was taking off, I was like, man, I can't, I can't take my foot off the gas. Yeah. <laughs> you know, because I saw it that it was taking off. Mm -hmm. And uh, and it's still going. It's it's amazing that it's still going, and it's it's. I actually had a guy today reach out for me from Monterrey, Nuevo León. Salud para la raza de Monterrey, and he's like. I want to be the first vendor. Quiero ser el primer vendedor de tu producto aquí en Monterrey, en México. I was like, wow, that's crazy. That's super crazy. That's the point. Um, branching out. Ahorita lo, lo, lo más nuevo que traemos ahorita es este que empezamos a hacer el Scarface Racing. Este, probably a lot of y'all saw the race contra Freddy. And he was actually here today earlier. He's actually going to be, he, you guys probably saw as well, que they broke into his shop. Uh, he's already fixing it back up. Hopefully he has a bunch of security now, like cameras and stuff. But um, he's getting pretty close to opening up, and he came to my house to talk to me that he wants to sell my mix at his shop. I said, man, that's awesome. And he's in Conroe, Texas. It's probably like about a 30-minute drive from here where his shop is at. And... Uh, I mean that that is so awesome, but yeah, with Freddie LSX, we we raced. He's kind of getting into the racing scene, I and, and I I've loved racing. I love trucks my whole life. I I, I was telling my wife uh, one time that I was I probably was like 14, 13 years old, and I was already trying to install uh, speakers and uh, equalizers in my mom's car and mufflers, and she would get super pissed off at me. <laughs> I always love vehicles. I still love vehicles. But uh, yeah, we're we're transitioning a little bit into the racing scene. 
on the 19th, there's going to be a race here. And we also talked about that. He was like, hey, have you done anything else to your truck? Because he beat me that last time. I said, I haven't done anything yet. He's like, are we going to race that day? And a lot of people like that, you know, that about the racing part. And I love it, too. But I don't think I'll go to an extreme where where I'll build, like, a full-built, like, racing truck. I mean, I just you do have, it. You have three trucks or four trucks? Um, I have... Because you have the, the lifted, the off, or the, what is it, the Bronco, right? I have the Bronco, because it's it, it, it called La Mudweiser. Mudweiser? We have the Bronco? <laughs> That that thing I bought it about twenty years ago. I bought it about twenty. All right, so, all right, let's go with the Bronco. <laughs> so on the Bronco, what were your plans always to make it in like the mud for like the muds and stuff? No. Or you just wanted to keep it stock, or what was how did the whole build of lifting it and making it like that? So the Bronco, um, I bought it as a work truck twenty years ago. The, I, I was start I was starting in the tile, and. Uh, I needed somewhere to put my tools to take me to work. And I remember that I bought that thing for a thousand dollars. I barely I was barely I barely was able to pay for that thing. I bought it. It started ma making me money. Me llevaba mi trabajo. Lo que me gustaba que como estaba cerrada, I would keep my tools inside the truck. I wouldn't get no me lo robaban. They wouldn't steal my tools. And one day, pulling a trailer. You, I don't know if you guys have them in Vegas, but here we have toll roads. And uh, I was paying at a toll road, and it just died. The engine gave out. I remember that, man, there was so much traffic. A wrecker had to come pick it up. So I brought it home, parked it in the back, and it sat there for, like, more than a year. Porque well, I, I had to buy another vehicle. Yeah. And it sat there for a long time. And then after a while, I said, you know what? Let me let me let me let me fix the engine. So I, we fixed the en I fixed the engine, and then some of my buddies were like, "Hey, there's an off road park. Let's go. You have a four by four." I said, "Yeah, I got a Bronco." He, they were like, "Bring it." I was like, "Let's go." So if we, and it had actually it had no lift. They had nothing, but it was a Bronco four by four. So I went in the mud, and it was awesome. And then I I was just getting stuck everywhere, and then that's when I said. I don't want to get stuck. It's going up. So I got a little bit bigger tires and a small lift. And then I went out again. And then uh, I got stuck again. So it went a little bit higher and a bigger lift. And then I got stuck again. And then it, it got bigger. And it just got bigger to the point that it is right now. And now, I mean, I still drive it. I still go through mud and stuff like that. But now... It's more like a billboard. It's a Scarface billboard. Um, I get requested by businesses if I can drop it off and bring it to their to their stores um, to cause attention. So to yeah. bring in, you know, bring in people to their stores. Y esa es la historia de la, de la bronca. I actually, I rolled, I rolled on that bronco one time. I messed it up completely. I broke my nose, dislocated my shoulder, and uh... You didn't open your skin though, right? Yeah. You didn't open the skin? Yeah, yeah, I mean, it, it just, I mean, it broke my nose, I mean, it, I, I was, I had cuts and stuff. No, but it wasn't, it, it didn't happen like on the fence? It didn't add to your scar. No, it didn't. It didn't add to your scar. It didn't add to my scar. My nose looks pretty, pretty good. And then, uh, for a while there, I said, man, yeah, I'm gonna get rid of it. And then after a while, I said, nah. I went and I took off that body, and we put a, a new body, and that's the body that it has now. And that's, the, how, how tall is it right now? Man, I don't even know. I know it has it's track. It's going taller, right? Uh, it's, it's getting just a little bit taller. Um, there's talks about that maybe American Force is going to is gonna sponsor me some wheels. Hopefully they do. Uh, they want to they wanna give me some wheels because they already gave me a pair of wheels. Thank you, American Force. I love y'all for uh, my F-250. They approached me and they were like, we want to give you wheels. So they gave me a pair of wheels for that one. And now they had talked about, hey, if when it comes out, show us progress of, of what you're doing to it. And we might sponsor you on that one too. I was like, wow, that's awesome. So it might get bigger wheels, a little bit bigger tires. And just the, what, what it's getting down now is uh, just upgrading the suspension because it's the same suspension that it's had for 
about 20 years when I got it. And uh, now it's going to be updated by exclusive DTS. Saludazo para ustedes. The main truck, the 50 to 1. Where did the inspiration for the name come from? I know you, I know you said it on your, on your YouTube channel and you spoke about it. But for la gente que still hasn't subscribed, go ahead and subscribe to Scarface YouTube channel. And I mean, you can find an answer, but we'll get an answer right now. Where did the name come from? And where does the inspiration of that whole truck, because it's one of the cleanest trucks that's out there. So well, where does it come from? Well, she's actually not the main one. <laughs> I have another. I have another truck. I have another truck. Um, it's a Harley Davidson. It's a 2007 uh, four-door Harley Davidson that I bought brand new. It took me about five or six years to pay that thing off. That thing I bought it brand new from the showroom. Uh, we put a small little drop on it, and then we we took it to Michoacan. And came back. Oh, man, I love that truck. I, I still have it. It's actually at a shop right now, Finesse Concepts. And I got sponsored by uh, Mr. Intro. It's a little bit of Intro Wheels. Uh, we're going to do 30s on the rear. 28s on the front on that one. And it's going to be fully bagged. So wait for that one to come out. But 50 to 1, no, is the main one. I think that's the main one. But it's it's been on hold. And, I've, you know, but... 50 to 1. All right. Let's go back to, to 50 to 1. She's one of my girls. The other one, Harley Davidson. That's a badass it's, truck. It's the Harley. Uh, we, when I bought that truck on the Harley Davidson, I was so excited to, to just buy it that I didn't even realize it, that it was supercharged. That was It was not supercharged till I got home. And I opened the hood, and I was like, where's the supercharger? I was like, no, hell no. I kind of wanted to take it back, but it, the truck was so beautiful, I just decided to keep it. And over the years, I said, one day I'm going to supercharge it. One day I'm going to supercharge it. One day I'm going to supercharge it. And after how many years? My kids graduated, both of them, from high school. And then after that, I said, you know what? It's time. And I dropped the supercharger on that truck. I did audio system on it. And now it's doing. We're doing that. The the we're gonna have it on a ride like a on a, like on a cloud, with thirties, twenty eights from uh, intro wheels. So yeah, that's a beautiful truck. So la like fifty to one. Back to fifty. Um, that truck. One of my one of my uh, members, Ground Zero, because I'm in I'm in a truck club. It's called Ground Zero. Um, it was up for a raffle. They were raffling it out. Y me llegó, me llegó el mensaje, hey, ¿no le quieres entrar a la rifa? I was like, yeah, whatever, you know. I think it was like a hundred bucks, boom. It was just a couple of people. The guy never drove it, he just sat there. He decided to get rid of it. So I entered the raffle, and uh, and I told the guy, hey, me la voy a ganar yo. And, and he was like, ah, whatever. And uh, so the day of the raffle comes, I missed it. I think I missed it. Oh, it was, it, it was... The way you would win this, it was through a football game. And I missed it by a touchdown. <laughs> I did not win the truck. I didn't win the truck. I wanted the truck because I'm a big Ford uh, fan, enthusiast, whatever you want to call it. And uh, I didn't win the truck. And then like the next day or like the next week, the guy that won the truck, he calls me. And he's like, hey, I heard you really like this truck. I said, yeah. And he was like, well, I don't, I don't want it. He's like, I'll sell it to you. I was like, I, I will only buy it if it's cheap. But he didn't. He started at a big number. And I was like, you know what, bro? Keep the truck. Try to sell it. Because the truck came from the valley. Salud por la raza del valle. I said, you know what, bro? Keep the truck. I don't need it. No la necesito la troca. I was like, I have my, my, I have my Harley Davidson. I was like, I don't need another truck. Yeah. I was already thinking of doing stuff to the Harley. And... He's like, how much you give me? So the price started going down, 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 till we got it to, to the price I wanted. And he said, let's do it. He brought me the truck. Um, when the truck got here, I don't know if you guys seen it before or pictures, but that truck used to be orange with green, like a lime green with flames, bunch of flames. 
But I, what I liked about it that it was a Ford. It was a body style that almost nobody has out there in the scene like that. And uh, and it was already bagged, and it had wheels, and it looked nice. So I had it here for a week, and after having it here for a week, I said, "Fuck that." I'm sorry. I probably have to bleep that. <laughs> uh, let's let's paint it. So we took it to the shop uh, in uh, Baytown, Texas. Y la pintamos, la mandamos pintar. Fue lo primero que le hicimos a, a la 50. Um, once, once, it, uh, once he painted it and it came out, I was like, whoa. In love. I was like, wow. Yeah, I was in love. I was like, wow, this thing looks crazy badass. So after that, I said, what's next? Interior. Let's do the interior. Because they didn't match. It was green with orange and stuff. It didn't match. I was like, man, we got to change the interior. So we stripped the interior. We stripped the interior. And when they were doing the interior, that's when I came up with the name. I said, I think I said something like, this is going to be like one of a kind or or somehow I just, the name just crossed my mind. Like, this is going to be like one out of 50 because everybody drives a Chevy. I mean, I got nothing against Chevy drivers. That's what they prefer. That's what they drive. Un saludo para ustedes, para todos los Chevy drivers. Pero I was just like, damn, this truck is going to be so different. Like, it's going to be the only one. And that's when it hit me. It's going to be like 50 to 1. So what that that's what it means. Okay? Everywhere I go and everywhere I went, it was going to be 50, 50 Chevys to 1 Ford. That's how the, the, the name of La 50 came about. And all right, so the last truck. Well, the most recent truck that you have, which is... Karen. 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 <laughs> so, Karen, it's a 2019 F-150. Um, I have a 250 that I that I drive... I don't kind of don't drive her anymore. That's what I wanted. Uh, a F-250, and it's like a tank. And I, my wife would be like, go to the store, buy this, and I go in a 250... So one day I started using my daughter's car. She has a little little mini Cooper. Feels like you're driving like a little go kart. And I'm, I started driving it. And one day I get home and she's like, um, "You left it with no gas." And I'm like, "Oh, sorry." And then another day passes up and she's like, "You're putting a lot of miles in my car, and you left with with no gas again." And I was like. So then I got in trouble with my wife, and she was like, don't drive it anymore. Don't drive her car. I was like, oh, okay. So from that day, I was like, I need a daily. I want a daily, but I don't want just any daily. I want a, I want a single cab F-150. And I started looking. I started looking online. I started looking everywhere, researching, and I was like, man, they're expensive. And then I let it go for like two, three weeks, and Karen just... Me cayó a mis manos. We were, I was hanging out with my, with my boy, Easy Wireless, and the truck shows up. And my friend, Easy Wireless, is like, hey, you like Fords? See this guy right here? He builds trucks and he sells them. Buy that truck. So the guy gets off and he's talking to him and he's like, hey, I told him that he could buy your truck. And I told the guy it's for sale. And he was like, no, it's not for sale. But at the right price, everything actually is for sale. And uh, we exchanged numbers, Instagrams, and like two, three days later, I, I sent him a message. I was like, hey, when can I pick up my truck? And he was like, are you sure? I was talking about Luis, the ex-owner. He was like, are you sure you want this truck? I was like, yeah, man, it looks nice. And he was like, let me pull some numbers. So he pulled a couple of numbers. We talked about it. We came to an agreement, and I bought her. And right away, a lot of people were like, what are you going to name her? What are you going to name her? I actually put it on my Instagram. Help me pick a name for, for this truck. And I got a bunch of a bunch of names. La Cocaina. La, la, um, man, I can't even think right now. Um, let me see. Ghost. La Ghost. La Güera. La Nombre. And I was like, what am I going to name her? What am I going to name her? And then one day my wife was like, I know what her name is going to be. Don't say the bad word. And I was like, what? Dijo, her name is going to be Karen. And I was like, Karen? And I 
was like, why Karen? And then I started thinking, and I was like, ah, oh, I know why. You know, there's, there's a lot of Karens out there going crazy. Calm down, Karen, calm down. And what are they? They're white ladies that go crazy. White bees. White bee. So she was like, I'm going to name her Karen because she's a white bitch. <laughs> Shout out to the whites for the name. Yeah. And I, and I actually let her because she's the one that let, you know, suelta la feria para pa meterle más cosas. So I was like, okay, you can name this one. <laughs> so she, all right, so is Karen going to be, since you started the Scarface Racing, is that going to be like your main truck for the for racing? For right or? now, it is. Right now it is um, because it's more of, it's more of a sporty sporty truck. We were actually supposed to race Freddy with uh, with La Fifty to One, but it yeah. but we have to do a lot of work for for on that truck to race because it's on airbags and and I, I was like man I'll race some but I man I was gonna have to do so much to it on the suspension wise and now that we got this one it's like it's so much easier because you know it's a lot of bolt ons a lot of it's easier stuff it's not on airbags. And uh, so after after we raced Freddy, we did a little bit of research, and uh, right now we have a couple little things in store for it because uh, we might race in October Truck Madness, and because uh, the truck is a twin turbo, we I think we're gonna probably like upgrade the little turbos. Uh, we're just gonna do a couple little things and go to the track, and I've heard. And I hope it happens. Um, Billet Specialties uh, wants to sponsor this truck. They're looking to see if uh, they might uh, sponsor me with uh, some light wheels. Billet Specialty light racing wheels. I hope it comes through. And if it doesn't, well, I'm going to have to ask my wife to write a check real quick. Cause uh, so we can so we yeah my wife's gonna be my sponsor. I'm his biggest sponsor. Yeah, she's my biggest sponsor. So, um, if we get that, that would be awesome. If not, they, you know, we'll do we'll do it through another way. But yeah, Karen right now is gonna be more of a little racer, little to take it to the track. And I already got called out by a bunch of people on Instagram. Hey, when can you race me? And we, it's crazy. Like everybody wants to race. And then we did the the Scarface racing. Um, caps. We did the Scarface racing uh, decals, and hopefully we we get a, a couple more things. Let me see. I, got, I think I got it right here. Oh look! And then I got. We just recently got this one made. It's a decal, de la Karen, with the Scarface racing. That's one of the. That's one of my new decals that that we're uh, promoting right now. And then we have the Scarface Racing one. See it? Scarface Racing. Mm -hmm. So we have this. We're going to start doing a, a couple little things of, of Scarface Racing. We we might make some shirts with the trucks, like racing. So we're, we're transitioning into that. But we're, we're never far away from the truck scene. We're always into trucks. I'm always into trucks. I love trucks. I like to go see trucks. You know, I'm, I'm, I'm a big fan of, 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 of going out there. And, and, and then now that we go to shows, my wife's <laughs> my wife was like, this is, that's crazy because this is what you love to do. I, I used to go to shows all the time. And now I go to shows, I do my thing, I hang out with people, meet new people all the time, sell my mix, sell my merch, and then I get to see these trucks. I get to travel and go all over and check out other people's vehicles. That is so awesome. Do you plan on? Cause I know you're. In, you have um, can ams and stuff, right? Yeah. Um, you got one for your wife. Do you plan on doing like a, a off road type thing, like racing team with that, and expanding into that, into that? No, that 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 one is, is too expensive. Uh, those those. Uh, if you guys have a can am or a razor or a four wheeler, those things are so expensive to to keep up with. For the maintenance for any little thing it breaks and it's like oh my god it's expensive no those are those are made we bought those because here in, in houston close to houston there's a little city called crosby texas and they have an awesome park it's called extreme off-road and uh it's a place to go on the weekend and you just forget about everything 
you go ride, you you go have a good time, and uh, everybody has a Razor Can Am, and uh, I, I, I kind of got bullied into it or uh, peer pressure. My friends were like, "We all got Can Ams, we all got Razors. When are you gonna get yours?" And I was like, "Oh man." So I kind of had a breakdown and gave me one, and then now we we recently wrapped it, and now it's it helps me as a billboard as well. We took it to uh, Slamboree in Oklahoma, and man. I'm gonna tell you this: the 50 was here, and the trailer, the Canon was here, and it looked and I, and it seemed like uh, the 50 to one was invisible. Everybody was just like, "Oh my God, what is that? That thing is so nice." I was like, "Yeah, but I got a truck over here too." Psh, they weren't even paying attention to my truck. Everybody, it, it just caught so much attention with the wrap we put, the Scarface, and that's mainly what it's for, you know, to attract people, you know. So when we take it to shows and stuff like that. You're planning on, on hosting your own show in the future? Because I know you love going to truck shows. You love seeing the trucks. You're into all these events, and you, I'm pretty sure you love burning out. Like yeah. Anybody else does. So, do you ever plan on hosting anything? You know what? The races? You know what? I, I'm, I probably will end up not now, and especially because of the COVID, not now, yes. but I, it will happen. I already have a lot of people, a lot. Bro, if you would make an event, I would go. Um, one of the ideas that I had, because I also have uh, the my other uh, brand, which is Listo Palpisto. Um, my idea was to make a Listo Palpisto um, event. And uh, on that one, we would do like a concert truck show, you know, like, just like a like a big fiesta like and i want to that's one of the names that came up in my in my head el uh, listo palpisto event or listo palpisto show or um it will happen it'll eventually happen y si no se llama así, it'll, it'll be something else but i will end up throwing myself a, a, a like a big show and and hopefully people come out and uh then make it a yearly thing you know make it a yearly thing where people come out to the scarface show the listo palpisto event something it will happen and you'll be invited so so you can come and and take a lot of pictures perfect thank you okay so another question is how do you well, we're gonna go back to the mixes all right how, how, do, you, how do you feel about other people starting their own mix brands and stuff do you feel any competition I know you. I know you personally. I'm pretty sure you don't. There's room for everybody, but you feel like the the just the the people make it sound worse than it should be, like competition wise. It does. Co competition. I always see competition as something good. Um, competition keeps you on your toes. It keeps you motivated. If there wasn't nobody else doing this, I would probably get bored. Me aburriría, and I would my, no le echara tanta ganas. No le echara ganas este pedo. But I see all these youngsters um, that see me, and they're like, I could do that. Man, I, sometimes I'm like, man, it's crazy what, I, you know, what, what I kind of feel like something I created, and then I see that and I always get a lot of a lot of people you should tell this guy something you should you should hit him up and I'm and I'm just like man there's there's no need for that you know el sol sale para todos there's room for everybody you know just whoever's out there making michelada whoever's trying to do what I'm doing the only thing I could tell you échale ganas no te des por vencido échale ganas you know, echándole ganas todo se puede. You, okay, so, exactly. So, do you plan on, on, I'm pretty sure you've seen toda la gente que está haciendo los dulces. Yeah. And all that. Do you plan on expanding into like that when you no, get no. the headquarters? Or is it just going to be pure mix and just. No, we're, we're, we're going to keep it, we're going to keep it pure mix. Um, And the reason being so it could always be top quality. I don't want to be. I'm going to make this also what I am doing is like 
and a lot of people started doing it after she came out. Yum Yum Candy, we backed her up. And there's a lot more candies out there. Y les mando un saludo. And I always get, they send me their candies to taste. But, uh, you know, she, I feel like she's part of my team. And also Gallito Grillers. He does the carnita seca. We, 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 we're like partners. We, we help each other out a lot. And y también está saliendo uh, carnitas de todos, you know, doing what he's doing. And that's awesome. And I just let them do what they do. The only thing I do is try to back them up and help them out. In return, I, they help me out and they back me up. But I don't think I don't think I would go into I'm gonna make cheap dulces and I'm gonna make this and that too. We're gonna we're gonna keep it a lot more micheladas and uh, maybe come out with new flavors. As we'll see, new flavors when we make the the new headquarters, the new building. We'll make that's when we'll step up our game and make more flavors. But no, no, no. I mean, we we we're sticking to michelada, 100. That's what it's gonna be about. And merch, we're gonna start doing a lot more merch because, like this shirt, a lot of people, hey, on the la camisa, la gorra. So now we're doing merch. También. On the merch, okay. On the merch side, do you plan on doing more stuff for like the female side? Because I know, I know you have the female some part, like some clothes that are for like the females y todo. Miss, um, but do you and your wife plan on branching out into that a little bit more? Well, because I have my wife, because I have my daughter. And they go with me to all the shows and all the truck shows, and they see, they help out. They pick, now they're, what they're doing is like, we're going to make a leopard print, we're going to make this pink for the girls, because a lot of the girls that go to these shows, they walk up to a booth, and all there is is stuff for guys. <laughs> and then now they they go to my booth, and they go home with a, with a, with a, a, a girly shirt, girly sunglasses a girly uh decal that my wife and my daughter uh, helped me pick out design and and create but yeah we we're definitely gonna uh, we definitely want to do a lot more for the girls because of my of my girls and that they help me we want to we want to do more shirts so we already have the like the like the the glass mugs we have those ya que dicen lista pal pisto the tumblers um, the the sunglasses, the pink ones. There's gonna be a lot. There's gonna be more stuff for girls. So when we go to shows, uh, one funny story that my wife told me was that uh, there was a guy that came and said, uh, let me get one of those. What was it, leopard? Let me get one of those leopard shirts. My wife was like, what size? I don't even know what size it was. And that the guy was like, yes, yeah, because I I want to take something back to my wife, right? <laughs> so I won't get in trouble because I was out here at the show all day. That was awesome. I was like, so we got to make sure we have stuff and gear for girls. Look, aquí está lista pal pisto. Lista pal pisto. And then uh, we already have uh, some shirts that have on the sides very little that said toxica, toxica on, it, on some of the shirts. <laughs> yeah. Uh, is your wife there? Yeah, she's back here. She don't. I don't think she wants to come out on the camera, though. But you, she's... Okay. she's right, just so I have a question. She doesn't have to come out. Oh, yeah. How do you feel about the whole brand and your husband being known throughout the scene? Like, how do you feel about like when people come to your guys' booth? I know it's a lot of people that go. How do you, like? How do you feel? Um, que lo reconozcan it and all that. Um, it's weird because to me he's he's Ruben. He's my husband. Right. Um. He. It, it's crazy it's unbelievable I can say I mean but he's good he, he's a good he's good at talking to people he's not shy oh, I know that um <laughs> not like me I hide behind the camera cause I just work for him I don't but I mean it's just crazy it's crazy how how he gets recognized we could be at the store loading up groceries and they send him a video of us, and I'm like, oh, my God. You know, just, it's crazy. crazy. So I'm, I'm happy for him. Crazy story about my wife. She, first I quit my job, and I transitioned to Scarface Mix. I went at it full blast because she told me. She was like, you can't be doing both. You need to pick Micheladas or your towel business. 
And then she said, give it a month. Give it a month. So because of her, I took that leap. And I said, let me try it. One month became two months, three months, four months. And I couldn't go back. And then one day, <laughs> like after six months, was it six months? After six months that I was by myself making the mix, everything. One day she comes home and it's like a Wednesday and she's like, I forgot to tell you, this Friday's my last day. And I was like, what you mean? She's like, I quit my job. I put in my two weeks notice. And I'm like, what? She's like, yeah, I'm quitting my job because I need to help you. And she had been working at her job for 24 years. That's crazy. And she left her job for me. That's love right there. Any <laughs> advice you can give any like up, up and coming businesses, both, you know, as like partners, like any advice you can give to like some like put like to you guys, how she supports you, like any advice that she can give like the females to you know, support their partners and whatever businesses they want to grow? Well, first of all, I think it takes a lot of patience because at first when he he started making his mixes, I would tell him, you better clean up your mess. You know, like, right. oh my God, he's making a mess in the kitchen again. You know, it just takes patience. I mean, you never know what can happen as far as how big it will actually go or, or what will what the outcome will be. But it just takes right. patience. I mean... And then if you love the person, it's even better. How do you feel about that? <laughs> I feel good because she backs me up. On There's sometimes, I mean, funny story about the caps. Um, <laughs> she backs me up, but like the first time I went out and I was like, hey, I got a price on some caps. And she was like, what do you mean? I was like, I'm going to make some Scarface caps. And she was like, for what? To sell them. You're crazy. You're not going to be selling caps. And I was like, I think they'll buy them. And she was like, how much? Oh, what are you going to make? I was like, I think I, I got to make a minimum of like, I, I think it was like 20. Yeah. A minimum of 20 to get them at a certain price. And what's that price? And it was like 300 and something dollars. And she was like... Oh, no, you're not going to spend that kind of money on some damn caps. <laughs> and I was I had to like convince her. Let me get these caps. I promise you'll get we'll get the money back. This and that. And finally, she coughed up the money. I bought the caps and uh within a couple of days they sold. And I was like, "Wow." And just like posting them on Instagram. People wanted the caps. And the funny part about that now is that now I order by the hundreds. <laughs> hey, I just ordered two, two, three hundred caps. And she's just like, okay. <laughs> but at the beginning, she was like, what are you doing? <laughs> she got, you know, he's wearing, you're wearing one right there. But yeah, she has my back. Sometimes I have to explain to her, you know, that it's for the business you know we people want this you know it's not because i just want to do it you know people like different stuff and get your merch and 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 your items and stuff like that has there been something crazy that you've asked to buy and she's completely said no i don't think so i get i give into everything the thing is that like I, don't, I give in to everything. <laughs> I give in to everything. The thing is that I don't ask for like, like, huge things. Like, I don't uh, like. Well, it depends what you consider huge and other people consider yeah. huge. Yeah. Yeah, you're right. You're right. I, like, 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 like the truck. Which one? Was the, the, the Karen. Well, Karen, we already I had to. Because of your, because of the, of the, of the car. But yeah. Like, you came up with that. That I, like, but the I, thing is, I already had showed her. I had showed her uh, other trucks, and they were on the way off the price range that I wanted. Right. Because if you look up one of these trucks, they they run from from like forty to ninety ninety eight 
thousand, depending what kind of single cab you get. And I had showed them to her, and they were a lot of them were out of state. And myself, I felt like man, they're kind of expensive. I, I really wasn't pushing it, but I had I would show her, look at this truck. I was like, it's in it's in it's in Kentucky, and it's only fifty thousand. And then I would be like, and she would look at me like, damn, and I'll be like, nah, it's too expensive. So when when we when I gave her the price that we negotiated with Karen, it was uh, way lower than what I had been showing her. Mm-hmm. And she was like, let me see the truck. And I showed her a picture. And she was like, get it. That, that truck is nice. <laughs> oh, that's good. Any, all right, now, any advice you will give any upcoming brands that want to not only expand with them, like start their own mix, but like just in general, any any upcoming brands that you know what's the best advice that somebody gave to you that you can get to them man any mistakes you learned from you know being in business for so long um the the be- the, the the advice i can give you is if you're going to start something don't give up right away um échale ganas try keep trying another thing you need to do if you're out there trying to start any kind of business, it don't matter if it's another a Michelada brand, it could be whatever a T-shirt brand, a cap brand, um, a food, uh, a taqueria, um, anything. Reach out to other people. Reach out to other people, and and try to get you know other people involved to help you. And if that person doesn't help you and they don't want to, go to the next person. Keep knocking on doors. Keep knocking on doors. Porque un día se te va a abrir una y con una que se te abra se te empiezan a abrir las demás. And I'm one of the type of persons that I get a lot of people that ask for a shout out, uh, help me this, help me that. Y cuando veo que la, la ocasión se da, I, I try to help people. I try to help people as much as I can. Of course, I can't help everyone, but I do try. I send shout outs. Um, I do little little uh, giveaways with people. Podcast. Podcast. And believe it or not, every little thing like that takes time. It takes this is taking time from other things I could be doing. But you know what? I say I break down and I'm like, I'm gonna sit down with him. We're gonna do this interview. We're gonna talk about what what it, whatever he wants to talk about. And hopefully this helps you out. Castillo photos. I hope this helps you out. I'm in. I want I want to see you grow. I want I want everybody around me, all my team, all my friends that consider me a friend or a business friend, I want them to grow. I want them to, to come up, make money, que les vaya bien en la vida, you know? Y como le estoy diciendo, my best advice is échale ganas, no te des por vencido muy tan pronto, you know? Y también remember to start from the bottom and work your way up. I see a lot of people that they want to start at the top, and that's something. A lot of times, it doesn't work. You got to take baby steps, baby steps, and then crawl, walk, así como un baby. You got to start at the bottom and work your way up. Y como te digo, trata de try to try to uh, try to connect with other businesses and make like a little chain, make like a little team. And that will help out a lot of anybody, I promise you. Because if you if you're doing a business and you hook up with five other little businesses, and you post something, all those other five businesses are also gonna post you. And when they post something, you're gonna post them. So the more you get out there, the more people see you. That's when you have the more chances, you know. It don't matter if you get seen one time. That's all it takes. Que te ven una vez. And they're like, oh, shit. I want to try those tacos. I want to I want to try that michelada. I want to try that drink. I want to try those pies. I want Whatever it is. Whatever it is. Just don't give up. Keep trying. It don't matter what they say. Ah, la pinche michelada del scarf está más buena que la tuya. Don't give up on that. Don't. Because... You never know. Somebody else can say, I don't like Scarface Michelada because of this. 
but yours is better. You never know. You know? You never know. Yeah. All right. How do you feel about Mr. El Artista del... What's that? What's that? What's his name? El Artista. El, the Houston guy. The big guy. Oh, Bo Bundy. Bo Bundy. Okay. How did that whole thing come towards you guys? He knows who you are. He knows the brand. Yeah. How did all that come up? And how, how did you... I'm pretty sure you have like a relationship with him. It's a little bit of Bo talk, Bundy. How, how um, did all that happen? Bo Bundy is a, is, a, is a young little dude que le está echando muchas ganas aquí en Houston. Muchas, muchas, muchas ganas. He actually knows my godson, Gilbert. I think they went to school together. Um, he knows, he, he knew, my. I think my daughter and my son somehow. And uh, then he, he, I think he went to, he started seeing my videos also following me and then finally he tasted my michelada and he was like wow i like it and then uh we met and he me he was a normal person to me i guess he sees me like a normal person nos saludamos nos hicimos amigos um we started talking we started hanging out a little bit uh he came to my house a couple times and just because he was you know coming a coming up rapper uh, doing his thing, um, I, I actually gave him free mixes. I gave him a, a free shirts because I wanted him to wear my 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 brand. I was like, you know, he's he's coming out on videos and and he's yeah. singing and you know, uh, I I don't mind giving him stuff. I would give him. I think I give him decals, cabs, shirts. Even if he comes now, I'll give him something. Because he comes to the house, he comes here. To the house. He's actually been in this room. Uh, I think it was in. I'm not sure if it was December or Thanksgiving somewhere other. We almost got drunk in here, just, just hanging out, and uh, and then he, I just saw him grow a little bit more, a little bit more, and it was like wow, right before my eyes, he was just growing, growing, getting more, getting more popular, and what I like about him that he was already growing, and he pulled me. He was like, hey. And then, he, oh, he actually says the Scarface Micheladas on one of his, you know, one of his uh, uh, raps. Yeah. And then he and then he invites me to one of his videos, and I'm like, wow. So I'm like, let's go. Let's do it. So I come out with him, and then I think Esteban Gabriel was also there. Un saludo para Esteban Gabriel, because he's also from here, from Houston. Um, and then the one where he hit a million, a million views... That Rancho Mil, they recognized him and gave him that shot. He actually hit me up and was like, "Hey, we're gonna record this video right down by the by your house." And I had just messed up my ankle and I almost said no. I was like, "Oh my god!" I remember telling my wife, "I have to go to this video shoot," and she was like, "Your leg is all messed up. You're gonna go like that?" And I was like, "Man, it's Bo Bundy. I want to back him up. Invite a couple of my friends to bring their trucks." I was like, I'm just gonna go. So I went all limping and, and and however I could, and I came out in that video, and that video hit a million. I think it has more than a million views now. That was awesome. That is awesome. I congratulate you, Bo Bundy. Sigue echando ganas. Rancho Milde por todos lados. You got your boy aquí to compas How many? Two point eight. Woo! And I'm in that video. Hey, 50 to 1. La 50 to 1 is in that video. And then he grabs a jar like that and he goes like that. I'm in on the video. That's awesome. Yeah. That is so awesome. Do you, do you plan on like expanding in that world? Because I know you, you, uh, I don't know, you sponsor a group, okay? No, no they actually... Uh, Operativo H. They're, and, I, and I'll do it for any grupo. A lot of grupos hit me up and they're like, Hey, uh, we're an uh, upcoming group. And we just want, you know, we, we want to play so people can see us. And sometimes I'm like, man, bro, we already have, but we'll do it for free. And I'm like, all right, come on. So a lot of people hit me up to play music for free. And that is awesome. But sometimes, la mera neta, a veces me siento mal de que they come out and they want to, you know, they, they, they want to, they, they're not making anything. But a la vez te pones a pensar, okay, this is the way they're, they're hustling, they're trying. 
That's how I say keep doing it. Keep doing your thing. Don't stop. And Operativo Ache, they started doing their thing, and I started listening to them, and they were like, man, I was like, they play pretty good. And they yeah. were like, hey, help us out. Let me play at your parties. Let me play here. Let me play there. And on with them, I, already, I think I already came out in two or three videos of, of their music videos as well. And, and poco a poco, esos muchachillos, mira, they're growing. They're growing, yeah. they're growing. And, and I would do it for any, any grupo here in Houston that, you know, that we can back, that I can back up and, and have them at an, in, in a video. Um, I want them, I, you know, record them. If it's going to help them out, I'll do it. I'll do it for anybody here in Houston, you know? And not a, not only Houston. If we go to any any city and you want to be in my tent or hang out with me or come play just a song or two, you're more than welcome. Just hit me up. Send me that DM. Y nos contactamos. Any, any last words? Any advice? Anything? anybody but you or the missus if she's still there you have something to say baby no she just turned red and she's like no um i just want to say thank you for this interview um I, I know a lot of my youtube uh channel uh subscribers followers they, they they've been asking for a, for an interview and hopefully we'll have another one you know and and talk about more stuff um i want to thank you castillo photos for doing this, I want to thank Acosta, that he's 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 my, top, my my photographer here in Houston. He's the one that does all my editing on all my videos, and he does he does an amazing job. Le deseo la mejor de suerte. Both of y'all, you're in Vegas. He's here in Houston, um, and I want to thank every single one of you out there that watches my videos, that drinks my mix, that. Portan la camisa, la gorra, un decal. And hopefully I get to meet you one day. Y saludarte de mano. Um, hang out for a little bit, drink a beer. Or something. Así como contigo allá en Vegas, remember? Yeah, hopefully that'll sure. happen with one of you guys. And, uh, I mean, that's all I gotta say. Thank you. Los quiero mucho a todos. Un abrazo para todos. And hopefully we get to meet one day. Right, and then, well, this conducts the interview for everybody that's been watching. Um, Mr. Scarface Rubin, thank you so much for the interview, for the podcast. Thank you thank for you having for me. Support. Thank you for always supporting me. I appreciate it a lot. No, ya sabes que estamos, ahí estamos. Como te digo, yeah. you know, you, you gotta knock, 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 knock. You know, oh, alguien, yeah. alguien te va a abrir la pinche puerta y some, good stuff might happen. Sometimes they won't even open the door, pero nunca sabes, nunca sabes. This little door right here, ahorita es conmigo, because I don't, I really don't consider myself that big. But esta puertita can lead you to another door, you know. Uh, all right. So if you want to cut it on your end. All right. All right, guys. Aquí termina la la entrevista exclusiva con su compa Scarface, Castillo Foros. Ahí estamos. Make sure you watch and hit that subscribe, subscribe button. Hi, mom. <laughs>